The Precambrian time lasted for 4,056 million years. It started 4.6 billion years ago and ended 544 million years ago. During this period, the Earth formed starting with unicellular life forms. This period prepared Earth for new eras to come. The Cambrian period, from 544 to 505 million years ago, was known as the age of the invertebrates. In the 39 million years following the Precambrian time, the climate began to grow warm. The continents are starting to form, even though they were still barren rocks with no life on them. The perfect place for species to live was in the sea. There, single-celled algae formed. The algae grew in large colonies that looked like one large plant. Also, in the ocean, shilobites, picaia, animaloclaris, and sponges developed. For defense, the animals developed hard parts, such as shells, scales, and spikes. For example, the Hallucigenia had no eyes, so it needed the two rows of spikes on its back to protect it from predators. As the many species thrived, advancing glaciers caused a drastic drop in temperature and oxygen. The change was so sudden and extreme that few species were able to adapt, and almost all of them died in a mass extinction. The Ordovician period was the age of the vertebrates, lasting from 505 to 438 million years ago. The supercontinent Gondwana moved around, shifting toward the South Pole. As time progressed, volcanic eruptions and seafloor spreading were common. Life of the Ordovician period included those of the Cambrian period and others. In the sea, jawless fish, cephalopods, conodont, corals, snails, brachiopods, crinoids, algae, sponges, reef ecosystems, and trilobites evolved and created new species throughout the period. On land, there were only one-celled organisms, arthropods, and early land plants. By the end of the period, new glaciers formed in addition to the ones previously there, and much of the sea life became extinct again. The mass extinctions brought an end to many species, but the ones that adapted and survived were able to reproduce at the end of the Ordovician period. Following the Ordovician period was the Silurian period, also known as the Age of Arachnids. It lasted for 30 million years from 438 million years ago to 408 million years ago. This period was much drier than the previous periods, causing glaciers to melt and sea levels to rise. The warm sea provided a perfect environment for life to form there. For example, coral and jawless, jawless fish evolved. In addition, arachnids and eurypterids also formed. An eurypterid is similar to a sea scorpion and is a dominant predator during the Silurian period. As new plant and animal species evolved, tectonic plates collide with another plate and form mountain ranges, causing land to rise. Although new species thrived, many small environmental problems led to one major problem. Many plants and animals were killed off and the Silurian period ended. The Devonian period lasted for 48 million years after the Silurian period. Starting from 408 million years ago and ending 360 million years ago, it was known as the Age of Fish. During the Devonian, many changes in land masses occurred. Near America and Gondwana, two supercontinents, were both near the equator. Their location led them to have slightly warmer temperatures, which were perfect for plant life on land. There, plants develop vascular tissues to carry food and water throughout their bodies. They also develop seeds to be able to germinate without depending on water. The seeds helped the plants cover the once barren land and allowed wingless insects and spiders to live there. Also, vertebrates such as the tetrapod were able to move onto land. Jawless fish with cartilage support structures started out in the late Silurian and early Devonian periods. Later on, they evolved and developed jaws. Eventually, in the Middle Devonian period, the first bony fish, such as sharks, appeared. They had bones inside their body instead of armor. They later on evolved into long fish, with long sacs branching off their throat to breathe when oxygen levels in the water were low. Also, sponges and corals thrived throughout the Devonian period and built the largest reefs in the world. Although it is still unknown what caused the mass extinction, it is believed that it was caused by a meteorite impact. The extinction caused the water habitats great damage, and no reefs were built for thousands of years, ending the Devonian period. After the Devonian period was the Carboniferous period. It was known as the Age of Coal Forest because the trees growing there turned into coal once they died. It started 360 million years ago and ended 286 million years ago. During this period, 
forests became much more widespread due to the hot and humid climate. As the oxygen level increased, much bigger animals were able to live, and soon their first reptiles and giant insects appeared. Life underwater still flourished during the Carboniferous period despite the advances on land. By the end of this period, these organisms were endangered due to the mass extinctions of invertebrates and sea life. Also, the collision of Africa and North America formed the Appalachian Mountain Range and Gondwana and Euro America collided, forming one supercontinent called Pangaea. The final period of the Paleozoic era was the Permian period. Lasting for 41 million years, this period began 286 million years ago and ended 245 million years ago. Because this period was very dry, plants and animals must adapt to the climate or perish. Also known as the Age of Amphibians, the Permian period had gymnosperms, plants that have seeds. One gymnosperm still exists today, the ginkgo. Another dominant tree during the Permian period was the conifer, trees of cones. Animals also had to adapt to the dry weather. For example, the pelicosaur was a reptile that could live in a very dry environment with wide changes in temperature. It looked like a reptile that had skull characteristics that were similar to mammals. The most famous pelicosaur was the dimitron, which had a large cell on its back that helps keep a stable body temperature. While species adapt to the dry climate and evolve, the supercontinent Pangaea is complete. A collision causes the Ural Mountains to form and the conditions become dry. Nearing the end of the Permian period was a mass extinction. Corals, a dominant life form, become extinct. 90-95% to of species become extinct in seas due to volcanic activity in meteors. Scientists believe that this mass extinction is the largest ever to occur on Earth. The volcanic activity caused temperatures to drop and many species could not adapt quickly enough, leading to the end of the Permian period. After the Permian period came the Triassic period. From 245 to 208 million years ago, it was known as the Age of Reptiles. In the 37 million years it flourished, Pangaea had begun to break up. During the Triassic, the survivors of the Permian extinction died. Ammonites and brachiopods, however, survived and began to recover. The serratic ammonite, for example, was particularly plentiful during the Triassic period. New species developed in invertebrates, such as the belemonites. The relatives to our modern-day squids developed internal skeletons. Reptiles began to dominate the land, air, and sea. They are much more adaptable to different climates than the mammals were. The first dinosaurs appeared during the Mesozoic era. They were mammal-like reptiles because they were similar to reptiles except for the fact that they were warm-blooded and had different bone structures in their hips, legs, and hands. Although coal swamp plants were the most important plants during the Permian period, they couldn't survive in the dry climate of the Triassic, so conifers and ginkgos developed during the Triassic. In the end, a minor extinction wiped out species of both animals and plants, but in the end, the species came back and dominated the world. The Triassic period ended up being a transitional period between the Paleozoic era and the Mesozoic era. Succeeding the Triassic period was the Jurassic period, the age of dinosaurs. This period lasted from 208 to 144 million years ago. The landmass Pangaea causing violent volcanic eruptions and mountain building. The climate was warm and stable. As a result, many species thrived in the sea and on land. In the sea, many organisms from the Triassic thrived, such as the Ichthyosaurus and the Plesiosaurus. However, some brachiopods and crinoids became fewer and fewer. On land, cycads, conifers, and ferns grew to be thick and tall. These plants became food for the dinosaurs. A few of these animals were the sauropods, like the diplodocus, theropods, ornithopods, and archaeopteryxes. At the same time, mammals began to develop, but they were small and insignificant. The end of the period was marked by the widespread folding of the western border of the North American plate and the mass extinction of shallow water organisms. Also known as the Age of Flowers and the Last Age of Dinosaurs, the Cretaceous period lasted from 144 million years ago to 66 million years ago. During this period, evolutionary plants formed as well as the famous dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus rex. The T-Rex is reptile-hipped, carnivorous, and a theropod. A theropod is an organism that has two legs. 
the ceratopsian dinosaur, triceratops, placentia mammals, and new sea life also formed. The most significant development of the Cretaceous period, however, was the flower. Most trees before this period had been gymnosperms, or trees of cones. Now trees began to have flowers. Insects such as the butterfly, ant, termite, and bee also came with the flower. As species evolved, the Atlantic Ocean forms, South America and Africa break apart, and sea levels rise due to the growing mountains. However, ending this prosperous period was the KT event. This was a major mass extinction that caused 70% of marine life and 15% of land life to become extinct. One theory of how this happened was that a giant meteor hits Earth and volcanoes erupt. Smoke covered the sky and left no sunlight for many years, leading to the end of the period. The tertiary period lasted for 64.2 million years. Starting 66 million years ago and ending 1.8 million years ago, it was known as the Age of Mammals. There were five epochs, and the plants and animals in them changed with the climate and geography. The extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period wiped out all dinosaurs and large reptiles, allowing mammals to develop, grow bigger, and become the dominant life forms. The population of the plants increased, and insects living on pollen flourished, leading to an age of prosperity for the flowering plants. Hominids, the human ancestors, developed along with birds and new species of fish, such as trout, and bass. In the beginning of the tertiary period, the climate was much warmer and moister than what it is now. Eventually, the climate started to cool down during the middle of the period, and the cooling continued, resulting in an ice age during the final epoch. Glaciers, which locked up huge amounts of water, formed and lowered sea levels, forming land bridges which allowed for the migration of plants and animals. After the tertiary period was the age of the humans and the giant mammals, or the quaternary period, it started 1.8 million years ago and continues today. The continents were now in their present positions. In the beginning, there was an ice age. The cool climate caused evolution to occur. Megafauna, or giant mammals, ruled the earth. Mammoths, mastodons, reindeer, muskox, and saber-toothed tigers lived during the ice age. These animals had dick fur or wool to protect them from the cold. However, they could not adapt quickly enough when the climate changed. The temperature increased and most of these species died out. Therefore, new species of animals came to be. These mammals, bisons, deer, wolves, bears, lions, elephants, hippopotami, rhinoceroses, grew in number. The most important evolution that occurred was the development of modern humans.